Hi guys, this is the fifth part of our review of uh, Introduction to Polynomials Unit. These are the things we've already worked on, classifying polynomials, adding and subtracting, multiplying polynomials. Um, this is combining functions, um, but it's really, in the end, it still just was adding and subtracting and multiplying polynomials. We did binomial expansion, Pascal's triangle, we, and these are all previous videos, we divided polynomials. And then we started factoring. So, so far we did GCF factoring and factoring trinomials. So this video, we are going to continue factoring, starting with factoring binomials, and then moving into grouping. All right, if you see a binomial, all right, two terms, the um, first thing you're going to do, as always, is look and see if there is a common factor. But um, other than pulling out the GCF um, dots, when I saw this on the she was like, what are they talking about? Difference of two squares, OK? A plus B, A minus B, that type of deal. You're going to look for the difference of two squares. That's a binomial. Also, the sum and difference of cubes, like if you have um, 8x to the third power plus uh, 125, this would be the sum of two cubes, and that's a binomial. So we should know how to factor uh, the difference of two squares and uh, the sum or difference of two cubes. Okay, so I think we are on number 18. Okay, this is part five of our series. I think I already said that. Anyway, first you look for the uh, GCF. So let's see, two goes into both of these, so uh, I would pull that out. Kabam. Also, both of these have at least one X, so you do that too. Okay, dividing by your common factor, all right, dividing both of these by 2x reveals, you know, I think I'll keep this red, um, reveals that I will have x squared minus 25. Now, uh, when we practiced this in class, many, many, many students stopped here, and they failed to realize that this red part is factorable. So please watch out for this and uh, don't make the mistake that most of you made in class. All right, assuming you're not just watching this on YouTube and you never met me. Um, so we've got our 2x. This is the difference of two squares. So hopefully you know that uh, x squared minus 25 just very quickly factors as x plus 5 times x minus 5. All right, so that would be the answer for number 18. Please do not leave it as it looks in the previous step. Okay, now let's take a look at number 19. Number 19 is the sum of two cubes. Okay, um, it helps to know the first several cubes if for no other reason, just so you can uh, recognize the sum of two cubes when you see it. Um, for example, one to the third power is one, so that's a perfect cube. Two to the third power is eight, so eight's a perfect cube. Okay, three to the third power is 27, and four to the third power is 64. And I could go on, um, but you know, you could easily use your calculator to generate this list if you wanted to. Um, and the easiest way to do that is just to use your table function and just type x to the third power and then just look at your table okay and oh look you scroll down and there are all your perfect cubes okay as far as you need to go. Anyway um, I just wanted to point that out to you because look 27 that's a perfect cube. 64, that's a perfect cube. Uh, obviously, x is cubed. So that's what makes this the sum of two cubes. So watch out for that. 
Um, now, anytime you have the sum of two cubes, it's going to always factor as a binomial times a trinomial. All right, two terms and then three terms. The binomial comes from just, uh, it's just going to be the cube root of both terms of your original problem. So 27, the cube root of 27 is 3. 27 comes from cubing 3. So I'm going to have a 3. Obviously, x cubed comes from cubing x. All right, it's positive, so I'll just bring that down. And 64 comes from 4. So that's why I have 3x plus 4. That's my binomial. Okay? Now, the trinomial. So understand that I'm going to have this um, three terms. So I have this beginning and end, and then I have a middle. Okay, trinomial. I'm going to start with the first and last terms because those come from just squaring the two terms in the binomial. So if I take 3x and I square it, all right, that's going to make 9x squared. All right, if I take 4 and I square it, that's going to make 16. So I'm going to put plus 16. And uh, now, so that just leaves the middle. Um, I'm just going to put a little note here for you so we square these. Um, now, for the middle, we are also going to use these uh, terms, uh, the 3x and the 4, but it's going to be the product. Okay? It's um, if I take 3x times 4, it's the product of these. Okay, um, so 3x times 4 is 12x, but it's going to be the opposite sign. Okay, and um, so just remember that this middle one is always the opposite sign. If you need the acronym to help you remember, here it is. The um, SOAP refers to the three signs that show up in these problems. Um, this first sign is always the same as the original problem. This second sign is always the opposite of the original problem. And the third sign is always positive. So that spells SOAP. Same, opposite, always positive. Okay, but at any rate, um, this is your final answer right in here. Okay, there it is. Okay, so factoring binomials. <coughs> Excuse me, I must have allergies or something. So we did difference of two squares and we did sum of two cubes. Okay, um, so maybe that is that it for binomials. Okay, so let's move on to four terms. So binomials, we did uh, trinomials. Um, what about if we have four terms? If you have four terms, grouping is the first thing that you should try. And uh, so grouping works like this. You look at the first two terms, you look at the next two terms, and put them together. Um, so, so ignoring the second half of the problem for now, just look at the first two terms. What is the common factor? Hmm, number-wise there is none, but they both have x squared in common. So I'm going to pull out x squared. Okay, and now I have to ask myself what is going to be left behind in the parentheses. And, uh, you know, so if I divide by x squared is what I'm really doing. Okay, I'm dividing by my GCF. Then I'm going to have 2x, right? Now, x squared divided by x squared is 1. So don't forget the 1. So I'll have 2x plus 1 in here. Um, let's do the same thing with this one. 
what's the GCF here? It is 4. So I'll bring out that plus 4. Okay, uh, and on the inside, that is going to leave um, 2x plus 1. All right, now this was important that uh, this coincidence that we have the same parentheses twice. All right, if we don't get that, um, then grouping doesn't work. So look for these to be the same. If they're not the same uh, and you have four terms, so you're trying for grouping, look, double check and because maybe you made a mistake. Anyway, we have these the same. So that means this red itself is a common factor. You know, the, the, these parentheses, uh, this is a GCF. So just like we pulled out the x squared, you know, because that was a common factor, we're going to take these parentheses and pull them out because they're a common factor. Okay, so that's why we're going to put um, 2x plus 1 out front. Okay, we're undistributing 2x plus 1 a as a g common factor. Now, if I were to erase the 2x plus 1s out of here, because I put it, I put them out front. What would that leave behind? Well, it would leave behind the blue stuff if I erased all the red. Um, so that would be x squared plus 4. Now you should always look at this and check and see, um, especially when you see something squared, can you factor this further? Uh, the answer here is no. If this had been a minus 4, okay, then this would be the difference of two squares, and I'd go x plus 2, x minus 2. Uh, but with a plus 4, it's unfactorable. So this is actually the final answer. Okay, moving on to number 21. Four terms, so we're still grouping. Still grouping. Okay, so here we go. Let's put these together. And let's put these together. Now, the uh, GCF here is going to be 4y squared. So let's put that out front. Okay, that is going to leave behind. Let's see, if I divide both of these by 4y squared. Yeah, okay. So this is going to make 2y. So 2y minus 1. All right? Anything divided by itself is 1. So let's look over here. What's the GCF? Okay. You see the negative sign? So kabam. Um, now, both of these are divisible by 25. So think of this as a negative 25 as you pull that out. Now the parentheses. So be super careful. All right, if I if I divide both of these by 25, uh, I'm sorry, I'm dividing both of these by negative 25, like I said. So I'm going to have 2y and then minus 1. All right, the sign changes. And luckily, because we really need these to be the same. Okay, um, so this red, the parentheses, are a common factor. So I'm going to pull out the common factor out front. So I, I will have 2y minus 1. I've pulled it out. So that leaves the blue stuff behind. So that's 4y squared minus 25. Okay, on the last problem, once we got to this point, we had to stop because there was nothing we could do. So what about this problem? Are we going to stop here or do we keep going? Yeah, we have to keep going. This is the difference of two squares. So this blue stuff will easily factor as uh, 2y plus 5 times 2y minus 5. So please do not stop here when you've got the difference of two squares. You got to keep going. And of course, we'll keep 
the red part 2y minus 1. Okay, so all three factors, okay, that's the answer for number 21. Okay, so I think that's the end of factoring by grouping. Um, next, we're going to look at higher powers, like what to do if you have x to the fourth power. This is really nothing new. Uh, you might be thinking, well, I don't remember doing this, but I'm going to show you that you already know how to do this. So don't worry. We'll pick up with this on the next video.